Welcome. This guide's gonna discuss the potential of using two of the most powerful weapons in New World right now, in the Ice Gauntlet and the Warhammer, together in one build. The coolest thing about this build is how badass you are, because you actually have a giant fucking ice hammer that scales with intelligence. Keep in mind this is a bit of an experimental build. I have not seen anyone using this, nor have I fought anyone in PvP uh, with this build. I'm sure there's some people out there rocking it, uh, so respect to them, but it's certainly not a mainstream build. I think this build is great for anyone who loves using the Warhammer, but is tired of just getting deleted by the Ice Gauntlet, and you want to fight fire with fire, or <laughs> ice with ice. Hey. It's also great if you're already using the Ice Gauntlet and you want to trade out maybe your Rapier or your Fire Staff for something with a little more utility. If you want to focus more on your Ice Gauntlet damage, the Hammer is going to let you set up your Ice Gauntlet and guarantee your max damage combo, which we'll get into in a second. It also lets you smash stuff, which is satisfying. So here is a quick preview of the build. We're going to get into the details of all this later, um, but I just wanted to show uh, the setup here. And this is going to be an intelligence heavy build. So you're gonna be building mainly intelligence and supplementing it with a little bit of constitution. I honestly think you can make any armor class work with this build. It's basically, to me, armor seems more of a, of a preference of personal play style and how basically mobile you wanna be versus how much protection you wanna have. And certain builds favor certain uh, armor styles for sure, but I think you could make most builds work with most armor types. And so, personally, for an intelligence build, I really like the mobility of being in light armor. And so what you can do is you can grab the a medium armor chest piece, and then the other four pieces are light armor, and you're going to go want to just go with intelligence constitution. I think the faction pieces are probably the best pieces you can get for PvP because they have the resilience that reduces crit damage, and they have the gem slot to where you can... You know gem up with onyx or diamond or you know any of the ones you want to throw in there for resistance against physical and elemental in the faction shop you can actually change any of the faction pieces to any of the main stats with constitution um, and it's these little runes and you just grab them with your armor unequipped and you take it to the outfitting station and you can change you can just for a hundred tokens you can swap the stats from whatever they are to whatever you want them to be and so this, this will let you build a medium chess piece for light armor, constitution intelligence uh, faction set. So the main reason people shy away from using anything besides the fire staff, rapier, or musket with the ice gauntlet is because those weapons scale directly with intelligence, just like the ice gauntlet. And that's great if you're really just trying to max out your damage potential. But I propose that the Ice Gauntlet does enough damage by itself to kill pretty much anything in New World. But in order to do that level of damage, you have to connect your spells and you have to chunk your heavy attacks into your spell window. Uh, and you have basically have to meet these certain conditions. And the primary one being you have to hit your Ice Shower. And so basically what the Warhammer does is it gives you a guaranteed way to hit your Ice Shower into your uh, Ice Storm while you're chunking heavy attacks and essentially execute someone while they're chain rooted um, from your freeze. Now the other way we can get away with using a Warhammer with a full intelligence attribute build is because of the way gems work, magic gems in this game. And so you can actually put an Aquamarine, which gives you frost. And I would recommend um, spending some money on a good hammer and trying to find one with the highest intelligence roll you can find. It's essential, it has a gem slot, and I recommend uh, if you have the extra money, going for the highest tier gem you can afford. The biggest one you can get is tier 5. That gives you 50% um, of the weapon damage will scale off of intelligence instead of off of the base attribute weapon. So the Warhammer, instead of scaling off of strength, half of the damage will scale off of intelligence. That's why you see in these clips the right number is the frost damage, the left number is the physical damage from the strength. And the right number is way bigger because that's scaling off of my 253 intelligence rather than the tiny bit of strength I have. Now the other really cool synergy is by putting an ice gem in the hammer and having half the hammer damage scale as ice damage, your ice hammer actually benefits from the keystone rune at the bottom of your ice gauntlet tree, which is ultimate chill. Ice abilities chill targets, increasing ice damage by 35% for three seconds. 
And so if you hit someone with a hammer attack or a hammer ability within three seconds of an ice ability, they will take 35% more damage from the ice half of your hammer. Now, don't get too excited like I did because I know that sounds really fucking cool. I tested it out and there's only a few windows where that would come into effect, but uh, it's still badass. From a PvE perspective, this build absolutely destroys. Um, you can just, the AoE is insane. You can just cleave huge groups of mobs um, like you see me doing here. And it's really fun. <laughs> it's like a really satisfying uh especially when you've just been magic blasting stuff for so long being able to throw on a big ass hammer and like get some nice wax in in between your casts is uh feels very battle mage feels good uh i've been having a lot of fun with it so first we're going to take a look at the pvp side of the build and then we'll take a look at the pve stuff uh a little bit later but they're definitely similar but there are kind of some different combos you can use that will work in one that won't work in the other so we're going to go through the different kind of combos I've figured out and uh, for PvP specifically the one shot combo that I think you can use to basically delete someone if you catch them in your stun. Okay, so let's just start with the one shot combo because that's probably the coolest thing uh, about this build is essentially the idea that if you can catch someone in your Warhammer stun, you're going to be able to guarantee your ice shower and that's going to guarantee a couple heavy attacks and then you can guarantee your ice storm directly on top of that into a couple more guaranteed heavy attacks all of which are rooting for one second and you basically root them in place and delete them while they suffer the full debuff and damage uh wrath of frozen death that is the ice gauntlet big shout out to my buddy aaron for just running hours of duels with me while i try to figure out this build um he's a little lower level than me right now but we we're just doing this to kind of show the concepts of how the build could work with some of the combos. Keep in mind, this is a very new build, even for me. I've only been, I had the idea about a week ago and I've only been playing it seriously like the last three or four days. And so um, this is very much like a version one guide. I just thought the build was super cool, super fun. So I wanted to put the idea out there. And uh, if anyone has any suggestions or thoughts or improvements uh, that they think of, I would love to see those in the comments. Um, and if you like this type of content, I'm, I have all sorts of uh, sort of off meta builds like this that I've been thinking of and working on. And I'm hopefully going to be putting out uh, many more videos on just unique builds and trying to, uh, you know, make a case for how they could be good, essentially. All right, let's break down the one shot combo real quick. So what you're going to be looking for is a window to land your shockwave, which is your hammer stun where you jump up in the air and you slam down with your hammer. And so basically if you hit that, you have a two second window to pull out your ice gauntlet and ice shower directly on top of them. Now, as soon as they exit the stun, they are going to enter the frostbite route, which is a one second route. And then three more seconds of them 50% slowed, not being able to sprint and not being able to dodge. And if you attack them while they're frostbitten with a heavy attack, it will freeze them in place with a root for one second. On top of that, your ice shower has rendered them, so they're taking 10% increased damage from their reduced defenses. Your ultimate chill is making them suffer 35% more damage for the next three seconds. If you're more than 15 meters away, you're doing 15% extra damage from cold reach. Your damage is increased by 10% because there's one enemy in your ice storm from punishing storm. As soon as they drop below 50% health in your Ice Storm, they're going to be taking 10% more damage for 3 seconds from your Weakening Gust. From Critical Frost, you have a 20% increased chance to Critical Strike when they're in a frosted area. If you're at full stamina, those Critical Strikes are going to be hitting for 15% more damage from Energized Critical. And so with all these things stacked together, you basically have a 90% damage increase. You have a 20% increased chance to Critical Strike. Your Critical Strikes hit for an additional 15% bonus damage on top of that base 90%. And on top of all that, your heavy attacks will root them in place for one second. And the nail in the coffin to all this is if you run an emerald in your Ice Gauntlet, which I think is the best gem for Ice Gauntlet. If you have a max rank emerald, tier five, you're gonna get 20% increased damage against targets below 30% health from Opportunist 4. So as soon as they drop below 30% health, your 90% damage increase becomes 110% damage increase. And with those things stacked, you should be able to kill almost anyone in that combo. 
So the main thing you see me doing wrong in most of these clips is I'm not getting my full 15 meter distance. And that's just because I'm new to the combo and trying to get used to it. Um, but basically, you just want to strafe a little more backward than where I'm at in all these examples. If you can avoid doing the dodge roll that I do right here to try to get those 15 meters, that's ideal because if you do crit, you want to have that energized critical where at full stamina you're critting for 15% more damage. But if you feel like you need to gain some distance, doing a dodge roll right into the edge of your ice shower like this is a good call because you get a quick tick of your quick frost which gives you 10 percent speed in a frosted area on top of that you're going to get your quick shower which gives 25 percent movement speed for two seconds when you pass through your ice shower so after you land your stun and after you land your ice shower basically what you're going to do is you're going to do two heavy attacks and that's going to maximize the three second window you have on your frostbite so you're going to get your one second frostbite route then you're going to get another one second heavy attack route then you're going to get another one second heavy attack route. So it's a three second root chain and you're going to drop right after that second heavy attack. You're going to drop your ice storm directly on top of them as centered as you can on top of them. And you're going to follow that up as quick as you can with another heavy attack. And there's going to be a slight window where they're going to be able to move. But if you do it within the frostbite window, they're not going to be able to dodge and they still have the 50% slow on them stacked with the ice storm slow. And so you can pretty much guarantee that third heavy attack. And when that one hits, it's going to root again. So there's your fourth root and you can basically chain two or three more heavy attacks together in that ice storm for like six roots total. And... If that damage doesn't kill them, <laughs> they're huge because if you are in a full intelligence build with a good ice gauntlet, it's insane damage. And if you get just one crit, it can just be off the chain. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the ice gauntlet. We understand how to maximize its damage. So now let's go over the hammer. While the hammer is definitely more of a utility weapon in PvP, in PvE, you can actually smash the shit out of stuff. Um, and it's actually quite satisfying. And the way mobs will stay down a little longer than players will, you can actually just get some really nice swing combos in to sort of like happy Gilmore your way to victory um, if you're not feeling like blasting with the Ice Gauntlet. Taking a look at the Warhammer build, um, I'm only level 13 Warhammer, and so I have, uh, what, seven more points that I'm going to be able to get in here. But basically... Um, most of what you're going to need is like I have already and the, the next, so like even at like a level, you know, 12 Warhammer, as long as you have your aftershock, um, everything else you're going to get in juggernaut, it's a little bit bonus and it'll help you, uh, in PVP in those unique situations where you are able to get a hammer swing in. Um, but these talents over here are going to be more helpful, uh, for PVE and they're just going to allow you to just sort of ground and pound with your hammer a little harder and make the sort of hammer impact um, more satisfying. But also, you know, definitely could come in clutch in PvP. You know, depending on the situation, a little bit of damage is sometimes all you need. And so if you connect with a hammer swing and you have uh, the little bit of damage from some of these passives over here we're going to look at, uh, it definitely, it certainly could uh, help your cause to victory. Okay, so one of the main synergies here is this concussive impact plus 15% damage against targets affected by Warhammer debuffs. And I thought when I was making this build that this might stack with Ice Gauntlet, where if something had a Warhammer debuff and you shot it with the Ice Gauntlet, you would benefit from the 15% bonus damage. I tested it out and it actually doesn't work. So you're only gonna get the 15% uh, bonus damage on the actual Warhammer attacks. Um, another thing like that that I haven't tested out is this power through pain. And I think it probably works the same way because if it didn't, it would be really insane. Um, for one second after taking damage, deal 35% extra damage. So my dream would be if this was active uh, even while you had your ice gauntlet out. And so <laughs> basically if you got shot or hit by anything, your next ice gauntlet attack would deal 35% extra damage. Um, I don't think that's the case. I This one I haven't tested, so I can't tell you for sure, but it's probably just for the hammer. Um, and so that's just something to note. The way you want to play off of this with the hammer is you're going to try to get, once you get everything you need in Crowd Crusher, you're going to try to get to this exhaustive attacks next. 
and that makes all Warhammer abilities apply exhaust, slowing target stamina regeneration by 15% for five seconds. So that's gonna make every one of your hammer abilities do a 20% slow for four seconds and also a 15% stamina regen exhaust for five seconds. So once they have either of these debuffs, aftershock or exhaustive attacks or frailty from your shockwave, which is basically just a, a weaken for 10 seconds. So 10 seconds is a pretty long weaken compared to a lot of the weaken and fortify timers. And so basically uh, you have a fair, you have a 10 second window after you hit your shockwave and after everything else, you have a five second window where all your Warhammer uh, damage is increased by 15% from concussive impact. Um, on top of that, if you're able to get in a heavy attack, uh, you're going to increase your attack damage by 20% for the next four seconds with your Warhammer. So if you're able to weave a heavy attack into your combo, that's basically gonna benefit the next ability you're gonna have to throw out because pretty often, it, you're not going to really be able to do two heavy attacks in a row and so your heavy attack from boost from hammer time is basically just going to let you uh, smack your next ability a little bit harder and you probably will have time so if you follow up a heavy attack with clear out or with shockwave you will have time to do another heavy attack and that one will be empowered and you'll have concussive impact and so on that second hammer swing you're going to be getting 35% bonus damage uh, from these two things on the heavy attack. And so it can make it, uh, you know, pound pretty hard. You're going to have this grit. So this is super useful, both PVP and PVE, honestly, but it basically just makes it so your heavy attacks can't get interrupted. And then you're going to have contemption. And so on targets under 30 HP, increased damage done by heavy attacks by 15%. So this kind of plays into the way the ice gauntlet enters sort of execution range under 30% HP. Uh, this sort of synergizes the hammer to where if you're in a situation where your opponent's low and you have to switch the hammer uh, to finish them, your hammer is also benefiting from them being below the 30% health threshold. Okay, so let's say you hit a shockwave. The target's going to have three debuffs on them. They're going to have frailty for 10 seconds, 10% weaken. They're going to be slowed by 20% for four seconds by aftershock. And they're going to have exhaustive attacks on them. And so they're going to have 15% stamina regeneration exhaust for five seconds. So because they have those three debuffs, even just one of them is gonna trigger concussive impact. So you're gonna do 50% more damage from that. Uh, so let's say you start the combo out with shockwave, then you follow it up with a heavy attack. That's gonna be a 15% empowered heavy attack. And then that's gonna activate hammer time. So now you have 20% empower on. So then you're gonna get an empowered clear out. So that's gonna whack them backward uh, with increased damage from your empower. And now you have a window with your empower up to do another heavy attack. And so that's gonna be the 35% heavy attack. And then if they're under 30% HP in that scenario, which they are a decent amount of time, uh, it's gonna be another 15%. So that's gonna be a 50% uh, hammer attack and your heavy attack's gonna have grit. And so if something hits you while you're doing that heavy attack, you're gonna do 35% bonus damage on top of that. And so if you take a shot, you take a swing, anything during that windup, you're gonna deliver an 85% extra damage hammer blow. And for an intelligence hammer mage, uh, that's pretty fucking fat damage. And so I haven't really got to test the full power of that because as you can see, I don't have the Warhammer fully leveled up, but that's kind of the idea behind the end game hammer uh, side of the build is you're gonna have all this utility for PVP and you're also gonna have all this sweet uh, damage stacking for both PVE and those certain scenarios in PVP where you can find a clutch hammer swing to close it out. The other thing that's very much worth doing is, especially if you're in light armor, uh, when you get a stun with your shockwave, if you're planning to continue damage with the hammer, you really want to try to roll behind them and get your first heavy attack with a backstab. And what that's going to do, it's going to guarantee a backstab on your clear out because you're already behind them and you do that right after. And then they're facing you backward on the ground and that's going to guarantee a backstab on your empowered, your 35% empowered uh, heavy attack. 
and by that time uh, they're often under 30% HP and then you're gonna get another 15% bonus damage from contemption and then once you have all the runes in your hammer that heavy attack is gonna be uninterruptible and if anything hits you during it you're going to benefit from power through pain and so that's going to give you another 35% on top of the 50% you have. And so that heavy attack is going to be an 85% heavy attack. And that is going to chunk. The other main thing to know is just the fact that when you're working with the Ice Gauntlet, um, all three of these abilities are going to give you this 20% slow. So I found that the best way to use Path of Destiny is sort of to try to set up one of your other abilities. And the main way... I've been trying to use it is to set up my stun because really the whole time you're looking for your stun your stun's going to give you your one shot execute with your ice gauntlet so if you can land a successful stun with your ice gauntlet cooldowns up uh, you basically win and so that's your win condition so you're playing around that all the time so you're going to try to use path of destiny to uh, do this uh, stagger and uh, get uh, maybe a roll or two forward into a shockwave to try to secure that stun and that's basically your kill window Path of Destiny also seems pretty good against um, against mages and just sort of like running people down and disrupting them. And in certain scenarios, it seems like it could be good to Path of Destiny someone from far away to get this 20% slow. And right when you get the stagger, you drop an ice storm on them and try to just land a heavy attack right after that. And so you it's you know a little more reliant on you hitting, but if you hit that heavy attack, they're then rooted in your ice storm for one second and you can hit a second heavy attack. And a lot of times, if you can hit that first heavy attack while they're in your ice storm after you stagger them with path of destiny uh you can just kill them right there the, the other two things that are pretty sweet about this build is this facilitated expedition so after hitting a target with an active debuff obtain haste increasing movement speed by 15 percent for three seconds so anytime you hit an enemy after you've hit them with one of these abilities you get this little haste boost and then um on top of that all of your uh crowd crusher abilities uh, give you a little bit of health back. So 35% of damage dealt is health uh, when uh, using a crowd crusher ability. And so you're going to get a little bit of like regen utility um, from your stuff coming out. It's not much, but it's something. And, uh, you know, if you end up getting in like a nice hammer swing combo and you have these damage stacks while you're throwing out um, your abilities, it could definitely add up. A couple of final nuances I want to point out. If you're going up against big elites, um, you can basically treat them just like their enemy players, where you're gonna do the same kind of uh, hammer setup combo where you use your hammer CC to guarantee your ice shower and your ice storm. The only difference is that in PVE, um, you can use your shockwave or your clear out. Um, whereas in PVP, if you use your clear out uh, and they have stamina, they have time to dodge roll out of the way before you can ice shower. Another thing that's useful is if you have more than one enemy in your ice storm, whether it's PvP or PvE, you're going to want to rotate your heavy attacks to maximize the amount of time those targets are rooted and thus slowed and taking damage in your ice storm. Another thing I recommend is to always have a fuckload of water, especially if you're PvPing. Uh, water is actually a separate regen buff from the food, and so in fights, um, world PvP fights, if you have a window to get away and regen for a sec, uh, you can take a bite of food, and then you can also take a sip of water, and those are two independent regen uh, buffs, and the water isn't much, but it adds up if you keep sipping uh, every 10 seconds over a period of time. Another thing related to Ice Gauntlet and food is if you find yourself in a hairy situation like this, and you need a second to regen and reset, what you're going to want to try to do is drink a potion to get your potion on cooldown, and then while you're serpentining to try to dodge attacks, you're going to want to try to take a bite of food, and as soon as you can, after you take that bite of food, you're going to want to try to go into your ice tomb. And that's going to make you immune to damage for a full 10 seconds. And you're going to get a guaranteed 10 second food regen. And a lot of times that can be the difference between winning or losing a fight. Because like you can see in this one, I essentially get a full uh, reset and uh, end up coming back and winning. Final thing, I guess, is just your general strategy when you're approaching fights. Uh, this is mostly for one-on-ones. Um, if you just encounter someone in the world, uh, I think the best thing to do is to basically, if you can get the jump on them, you're going to want to start with an ice storm just right on the top of them and try to nail them 
with a heavy attack right in that ice storm and just max out um, your burst and try to get them on the run right away. If they see you first or if you get jumped unsuspectedly, you're going to want to try to use your Warhammer CC to get your stun and try to go into your kill combo as soon as you can. You can use your Ice Tomb to protect yourself and evade um, big attacks if you see them coming. And in a 1v1 where you're both confronting face-to-face -face like a duel, I think the best strat, at least that I've uncovered so far, is basically try to chip away with your Ice Gauntlet as much as you can and uh, put the pressure on them. So as you know, do your best to land your ice gauntlet attacks and just chip away and put the pressure on them. And that's going to force them to um, usually try to, if they're, you know, like a fellow ice gauntlet user using like ice gauntlet rapier, uh, if they feel pressured, that's going to force them to put their ice gauntlet away or whatever range weapon they're using and uh, move up into melee and try to do something different. And as soon as they move up into melee, that's your window to land your hammer stun. And then from there, you go right into your ice shower execute. While you're playing the ranged battle, you can also look for the opportunity to use your path of destiny for a stagger and do a roll or a double roll up and try to secure your stun that way and catch them off guard, perhaps uh, in melee range with their ranged weapon out so they don't have you know one of their defensive abilities uh, such as repost. So basically the whole time you're chipping away, trying to put pressure on while you're looking for that perfect stun. As soon as you get the stun, you execute your kill window. If you can't get the stun, you just try to win the damage war by punching them more than they punch you with whatever ranged weapons you guys are using. And if you miss your stun and if you're losing the damage battle, you just want to try to kind of kite back and forth and dodge attacks while you get a drink and a bite of food. And if your tomb is up, you're going to want to try to get a bite of food while you go into tomb, get your reset, and try again with your uh, stun execute. So that is the build. Damn, that was a lot. <laughs> that was way more than I thought I could talk about this build, but I just kept going with everything I had to say. And here we are, some fucking, what, 27 minutes in? Holy shit. If you're still watching at this point, I actually can't believe it. Uh, you have the attention span of a champion. You are a scholar and a... Uh, student of combat i respect you <laughs> um whoever you are wherever you are i hope you're having a good day a good night i hope you're enjoying uh, your experience in the new world as much as i am and uh looking forward to see if anyone is uh out there trying this build after i put this video out so so thanks again for watching uh really appreciate it and uh good luck out there